Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today we'll be talking Descents in the Cessna 310. Alright, so Descents, not the hardest thing in the world. I want to turn your attention to the GPS real quick. We'll be making an approach into Tifton Myers Airfield. Kilo Tango Mike Alpha, that airport right there. I have the VOR set to its local VOR. It does not have DME. It's just a regular VOR. All it has is radial info. Alright, so there's one, before we get started, there's one thing I want to go over in the performance section. This airplane actually has a, uh, another chart for you. Uh, thankfully, Cessna, being the great company they are, gives you a multitude of charts with every airplane. If you remember back to the 182 and the 172, uh, we typically have to manually plan our descent ourselves with a calculator or a little bit of mental math, assuming a 500 feet per minute descent. Now this airplane has actually has a time, fuel, and distance to descend chart, which means there's a specific way they want you to descend. So the conditions for this chart are power as desired. Above 10,000 feet, you descend at 1,000 feet per minute. Below 10,000 feet, descend at 500 feet per minute. So we'll start with an initial 1,000 foot per minute descent race since we are at 12,500. Landing gear should be up, wing flap should be up, and your airspeed should be 170 knots. Uh, we're just shy of 100. All right, yeah, we're really shy of 170. Now that's not indicated airspeed. All right, so I'm going to read the time, fuel, and distance to descend. Um, we're at a pressure altitude of 12,500. Uh, let's see, that's 10,000, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. At 15,000 there. We're at 12,500. That's 11. That's 12. That line right there. And it intersects with the charts line there. Uh, it's going to take us about 23 minutes to descend. So there we go. We know. We now know 23 minutes to descend. Uh, we would then use our whiz wheel to figure out how many miles we're going to go in 23 minutes. And we use that to determine how far out from a particular waypoint do we want to start our descent. Uh, it also tells, it's got the ability to tell us the fuel to descend. Don't really worry about that too much. Um, I'm going to turn us back towards Tifton. Now, it's on a 0 to 0 bearing. I'm going to turn this back towards 020. Autopilot's still flying the airplane. Let's run through the descent checklist real quick. As soon as I get back to it. Descent checklist. Fuel selectors, left and right engines set to main tanks. They have not changed. Power as required. Cow flaps as required to prevent shock cooling. So... We talked about this in the 182 um, checkout video. Shock cooling is when you... <coughs> if you cool the engines too fast. So the engines are running at 284 cylinder head temperature. If I were to just instantly drop the altitude, they'd suddenly get a lot colder. And, um, yeah, if I were to just instantly pull out the throttle or drop altitude, they suddenly get a lot colder. That's not good for the metal that the engine's made out of to go from really hot to just instant drop in temperature like that. In fact, it, it's rumored that it could cause engine failures. Uh, you can go on and on about whether shock cooling is an actual thing or not. There have been tests to show that it may not be, but do you really want to take the risk? Alright, so prevent shock cooling. Uh, mixtures adjust for smooth operation as we lose altitude. Basically, keep these right here turn off the automatic location of the PKGT on each engine uh, keep these as full these bars as big as possible note descent oh an altimeter set again standard atmosphere today I set it for standard atmosphere so 2992 we ain't got to worry about the, at the altimeter descents should be initiated far enough in advance of estimated landing to allow for a gradual rate of descent at cruise speed it should be approximately 500 feet per minute for passenger comfort. 
there's more to the notes, but... Okay, so we've gone over our descent checklist. Let's actually start the descent. So I'm going to select... I'm just going to bring the altitude down... We'll bring it down to 2,000. How about that? And I'm going to put us in a 1,000 foot per minute descent. Because we're above 12,000, or we're above 10,000, so we start with 1,000 feet per minute when we are above 10,000. So, note the airspeed's going to speed up. Once it hits 170 knots, I will bring the prop back to about 15 uh, to keep it at 170 knots. Uh, they want you to descend at 170 knots indicated in this plane. Okay, we're dropping below 12,000, so I'm going to turn the fuel pumps off. There's uh, 170. I'm now going to bring the manifold pressure back. Will 15 work? Yeah. Looks like 15. We'll bring it up. We'll set it to about 18. How about that? That'll be a good setting. 18 on the manifold pressure for now. We're going to increase our fuel mixture as we descend. If you watch the bar graph on these uh, gauges here, you will notice EGT is uh, definitely de increasing right now. And the bars are going up. Once we see these bars start to go down, that's when we'll start de increasing the mixture. We are now in a normal descent. Now, that airport right there, that's Tifton Myers. That's where we're going to be landing. Okay, we're right here over it. I only talked about that chart, the time, fuel, and distance to descend chart, because I wanted you to know it exists. There's two ways to descend this airplane. There is the normal descent, which we're doing right now, which is 170 knots, 1,000 feet per minute to 10,000, and 500 feet per minute after that. Um, there's also the maximum performance descent. So... We'll drop the altitude a little bit more on the normal descent rate for now. I want to talk to you about the maximum performance descent. So, this airplane can descend really quickly when you need it to. Most multi-engine planes can. If you bring the throttle out, dump the gear in flaps, you have so much drag that you can, um, you can descend this plane very quickly. Okay, so we're coming up to 10,000 feet per minute now. I've noticed that the bars are decreasing, so I'm going to increase the fuel mixture. They're decreasing again. Alright, there's 9,900. We're going to or decrease our descent rate to 500 feet per minute, as instructed by the, by the, um, the POH. Or not. Now, I'm doing it here because this is the how the, the checklist wants you to do it. Um, you may need to adjust your descent rate given a particular situation. If you're trying to meet the crossing restriction on a star or ATC instructions or whatever, you may need to play with the descent rate a bit. Anything, as long as you can descend at anywhere between 170 knots and top of the wide arc, so 170 to 140, that's good. Um, and descend faster than 500 feet per minute. That's normal descent rate. All right, so now we're pretty much right over the airfield. Let's talk real quick about um, the maximum performance. Let's actually, we already talked about it. Let's demo the maximum performance. I'm gonna turn off the autopilot. So when you're doing maximum performance descents, autopilot off. All right, I am going to bring the throttle back and I'm gonna bring the prop up. I'm gonna bring prop to top of the green arc. More pitch on the prop is more drag, and more drag is what we want. Now, 130-something knots. What's VLE on this plane? I can't remember. You may notice I'm climbing and pitching around a bit. That's because I want to slow the plane down. Let's see. VLE on this aircraft is 138 indicated. All right, so we're inside the wide arc. I'm gonna dump the flaps now. There's 130, I'm gonna dump the gear now. Keep the speed above blue line. All 
I now have as much drag as I can give it. Want to keep the speed below 130. Look at my descent rate. This is the maximum performance descent. Dump the gear in flaps and high RPM. Give yourself as much drag as you feasibly can. Now you may have to increase your fuel mixture a little faster. But you can bring the throttle out altogether. Which will allow you an even faster descent rate. I've maxed out my VSI with this. I don't even know how fast I'm descending. As long as you keep the speed of below 130, but above blue line, this thing can drop like a rock if you have gear and flaps out. Okay, I'm going to turn it back towards the airfield. Remember, keep your speed up below 130, because 138 is the LE speed, and you don't want to go above that with the gear down. So 130 is giving us a good safety margin. All right, I'm going to put the fuel mixture to full rich. And I'm going to set us up to enter the pattern at Tifton. We'll discuss landings in the landings video. All right, so we're 1,000 feet from the desired altitude. I'm now going to pitch the plane up. Increase the throttle. I'm going to bring the gear up. As we start to level off, bring the throttle up again. As we roll, there we go. Bring the flaps up to their first notch. And as we get set up to approach the airfield, when you're getting ready to landing, if you're doing an approach or you're flying in the pattern or whatever, maximum speed of top of the white arc. Now, I could raise the flaps now if I wanted. I'm actually going to keep them lower. I'm going to keep the flaps at the first notch right now since we do intend in landing at Tifton. It's right there in front of us, and it'll help us maintain that top of the white arc speed. So that concludes the descents video. If you're wondering for in single engine descent, it's pretty obvious. Just pitch down and keep the speed where you need it. Where you need it. Um, that concludes the sense. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.